Welcome to the Picture Language Seminar. It's a real pleasure today to have Dunling Deng. He got his PhD at the University of Michigan. He was a postdoc at the University of Maryland. And now he's on the faculty at Tsinghua University. He's a member of the Institute for Interdisciplinary and Information Science. And he's going to tell us about recent advances in quantum artificial intelligence. We're looking very much forward very much to the talk by you. And in fact, I should have mentioned that you were just named as a national science distinguished young investigator in China. So congratulations. And we're looking forward very much to your talk. OK, thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you uh, for the nice introduction. So let me uh, first share my uh, screen. So, so uh, can, can you see my slides? This is great, but you should go full screen, yes. Uh, sure, yeah, is this, is this not uh, okay, right? So, uh, okay, okay, uh, good morning, sure. uh, everyone. So, hi, <laughs> yeah. So uh, first, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Arthur for uh, kind of invitation, uh, for the kind of invitation to give me this opportunity to share uh, of some of uh, our recent group, uh, recent progress in our group. So uh, this is Dong Ning Deng from Tsinghua University. So in today's talk, I will try my best to share with you some recent advances in quantum artificial intelligence. Nowadays, this field is quite already uh, growing very fast. So it's uh, quite already broad. So I cannot cover all the uh, recent uh, progresses. So, uh, so my talk in some sense is biased. So I can only focus on the progress in my group. So um, another uh, thing I point I want to uh, make is that uh, I was told that the, the audience is quite uh, diverse. So I can only, uh, I will try my best to explain the basic ideas as clear as possible. So, and, and leave all the uh, technical details, uh, you know, uh, if you're interested, we can uh, discuss uh, uh, those technical details, okay? So without further ado, so let's uh, jump to the uh, quantum uh, AI. So uh, first, uh, what is uh, artificial intelligence? Uh, of course, this uh, the precise definition is not uh, uh, reached uh, consensus yet. So uh, in this talk, I will not go to the uh, controversial uh, part uh, of this definition. So for me, it's kind of uh, uh, AI is uh, intelligence demonstrated by machine. So it, uh, it is a very broad uh, field. It studies like knowledge representation, automatic reasoning, natural language processing, computer vision, uh, robotics, uh, machine learning, etc. So there are three categories, uh, weak AI, strong AI, and uh, super strong AI, right? So uh, for this wave of AI, people think that there are three driven uh, key factors that drive this wave uh, of uh, AI. Uh, one is big data, uh, the other is a new algorithm, and uh, then uh, hardware, right? So, uh, you know, uh, Gifri, Young, and uh, Yosha uh, only was awarded the uh, Turing Awards in uh, 2018, right, uh, for their pioneering uh, contributions in deep learning. Uh, as you know, AI has a lot of applications in many different uh, areas. So then, uh, so what is quantum, okay? So let me uh, explain what is quantum like uh, with a, a Ch Chinese uh, fable, uh, Asian Chinese fable. So uh, Yangzi uh, was once an Asian Chinese philosopher. So his neighbor once uh, lost a ship. So then they asked their servant to chase for, for it. However, uh, after a while, uh, the servant came back with nothing. So then they asked the servant, why can you find the ship? Then the servant uh, answered that, so uh, at each crossing, the, the ship can go either to the north or to uh, the south. There are, and there are lots of uh, crossings uh, along the road. So uh, I cannot uh, find the, the ship. So uh, of course, this, this, this fable has, a, has a, some philosoph philosophical meaning, right? But uh, here we already have the feeling of the, you know, the, uh, have the feeling about the dilemma of uh, the classical approaches. So in the classical world, you cannot search all the possibilities uh, at once, right? So that means uh, in the computer language, that means the n qubit can only store one of the two to the power of n numbers at any time, right? That's the limitation of the classical uh, approaches. 
So uh, in the quantum physics, uh, quantum mechanics has a, a the quantum superposition uh, property. So uh, I think the uh, a famous uh, uh, story is about the uh, Schrodinger's cat, right? The cat can uh, be at a, a, a superposition state. It can be both alive and uh, dead at the same time. So it is a superposition principle. So uh, when you use this superposition principle to build up a quantum computer or the elements like the uh, qubits, then the n qubits can store all the two to the n number of uh, of states just at the one time, right? At at once. Okay. So I think that's uh, uh, of course if you want to exploit this uh, superposition principle to uh, get some advantage in doing uh, computation. You really need to carefully design your uh, algorithms, right? To design some uh, fine-tuned algorithms, like a Schwarz algorithm, etc. Right? So, however, this uh, tells you that there are indeed some potential advantage, like you have exponential storage and the exponential uh, speed ups, right? So, uh, there are lots of uh, candidates for quantum computers, like uh, superconducting qubits, traveling ion, uh, Rydberg atoms, quantum doors, MV centers. Uh, topological qubits, etc. So different uh, uh, platform have div uh, their own uh, cons and pros. But uh, I think at this uh, stage, the superconducting qubit and the trap ions are the leading uh, platforms for uh, quantum computer at the current stage. Okay. Uh, then a question is that can we really like combine those two fields, artificial intelligence and the Quantum uh, computing, right? You, you, you quantum physics. Okay, actually, the two fields are deeply connected. So we can uh, look at this deep connection from uh, like these two uh, figures shown here. So in the uh, AI uh, literature or, or the AI field, uh, there's a, the so called curse of dimensionality, right? Uh, this means basically means that the data samples uh, needed grows. Uh, will grow exponentially with the number of features. For instance, if you want to recognize different images of cats and dogs, if you have a, a more and more uh, features, then you need uh, exponentially more uh, number of data samples. So uh, this is the, the curse of dimensionality. Similarly, in the quantum uh, world, there's also like a, a water coin pointed out, there's also kind of an exponential wall. That means uh, the Hilbert space is uh, exponentially large when you increase your uh, system size. So then it is, uh, you, if you want to measure or calculate some uh, quantity of, uh, of some observables, right? Then you need to climb uh, this uh, exponential wall. So you, you, need, uh, you need to find a way to circumvent this uh, uh, exponential wall. So uh, these two, this similarity between these two fields really uh, tells us that we can really uh, like um, uh, study the interplay between these uh, two fields. So then uh, this gives the birth of a, a quantum AI. So uh, it contains two parts, basically two directions. One direction is uh, so-called quantum enhanced AI. That means uh, you will try to explore the wildness of quantum uh, mechanics to uh, Design some uh, algorithms, quantum algorithms for solving some very challenging artificial intelligence program. Or even sometimes you can also propose some new paradigms for AI. Okay, so this is uh, one direction, uh, quantum enhanced AI. The other direction is that so there is uh, AI uh, ideas also uh, are very powerful. So we can use these AI tools to solve quantum uh, programs, especially those uh, quantum many body programs uh, with uh, exponential walls, okay? So we can also look at uh, this program from two dimensions. One is the type of data and the other is a uh, type of algorithm. If either one uh, contains uh, quantum uh, elements, then we call it, it is uh, uh, related to this uh, field of quantum AI. Uh, of course, this is a very interdisciplinary field. It contains uh, like quantum information, computation, machine learning, AI, condensed matter, physics, uh, etc. 
So this field is really growing very fast. Uh, here I only list uh, some of the early uh, review papers uh, about in this field. Okay, I, I cannot uh, uh, give a comprehensive list now. There's lots of uh, uh, paper already. So then, why should we care about AI? I give two perspectives. One from the classical AI perspective. So you know, in deep learning, there's also a so-called Moore's law. In about uh, every two point four years, the size, uh, the number of neurons for the uh, deep network will uh, double. So this is the Moore's law in machine learning. And also, the data set becomes larger and larger. By those days, the chat GPT is very popular. So you know the chat GPT for the network, the model, can, the number of parameter is uh, once, uh, uh, 175 billion. So it's huge, right? And the data set is uh, 45 TB, it's really large. And the training cost is uh, more than uh, $12 million, okay? So from this perspective, we, when we study uh, quantum AI is to first to enhance AI performance, to understand the AI better. Uh, I think most importantly to save money, to save cost, save electricity, okay? Uh, also, we also want to have a long-term goal to build up a strong AI, okay? This AI can, uh, at every uh, aspect, will uh, has a better performance than human beings, okay? Another perspective is from the uh, quantum side. So, you know, uh, Google in the USTC has claimed the quantum advantage or quantum supremacy, right? So, uh, but however, at the current state, all the quantum devices have noises. So then the big question is that, can we, uh, what can we do with this noisy, so-called NISQ device, noisy intermediate scale uh, quantum devices, right? So, uh, and the AI is a good avenue for NISQ device to play an important role, okay? Uh, another way is to learning, uh, find out, discover new physics or matter, uh, or uh, find some new physics, like for uh, high TC superconductivity, right? So from this uh, perspective, we want to find some practical applications in the NISQ era, and then learn some new physical matter, so kind of many body problems. And then also, as uh, you know, we, there are more and more quantum devices. So in the future, we may have quantum big data, right? So then it is important to extract useful patterns from quantum big data, okay? And uh, also, uh, we also want to find some quantum, so-called quantum learning supremacy, okay? So, uh, so this is basically the overall of this uh, uh, quantum AI. So I uh, showed what is quantum AI and what is a study and why should we care about uh, quantum AI. So uh, in this talk, uh, basically, I will follow these two directions. One is from quantum enhanced uh, machine learning or enhanced AI, and the other is machine learning in quantum physics. I will give several concrete examples to show how those two fields can enhance uh, each other, basically. Then uh, at the end of the talk, I will spend a, a couple of minutes to give 10 big challenging, uh, challenges. Okay. So first, uh, quantum enhanced uh, AI. So, um, you know, the, in, along this direction, so the target is to design some new quantum algorithm to solve uh, AI problems, especially this uh, challenging AI problems. So a famous algorithm is the so-called HHL algorithm. So uh, this algorithm is aimed to solve a linear uh, problem, AX equal to B, right? So then uh, these three gentlemen, uh, developed uh, an algorithm. With this algorithm, you can solve this problem. I mean, the time complexity is just a log n squared compared to the uh, most advanced classical algorithm. This algorithm needs n log n. The complexity is n log n, the time complexity, okay? Of course, there are some caveat, right? This is too good to be true. The first caveat is that, uh, first, you need to transfer this classical data to quantum. Uh, transfer this like this classical data B into a quantum state. This requires a QRAM, which is a, a source de a resource demanding. And also this matrix A should be well conditioned, right? But for well conditioned uh, A, there may be some other smarter classical algorithm to solve it, okay? 
uh, another caveat is that at the end of the day, in the quantum algorithm, you only obtain the uh, X states. You need to do exponentially many uh, measurements to uh, access the full information of X. Okay. So there are also some uh, more algorithms using HHL as a subroutine, like a BS in inference, uh, last square fitting, quantum PCA, quantum support vector machines. All those uh, algorithms suffers from the above uh, caveats. Okay. More recently, uh, uh, my colleague Lumin Duan's group they uh, proposed a, a so-called quantum generative model. So uh, I will not go to the detail of this model, but the take-home message is that for this model, uh, it has provable uh, advantages in all three aspects. Like in the exponential, it has an exponential representation power. That means uh, for some of the probability distribution, if you use this uh, uh, quantum uh, generative model to represent this distribution, the number of parameters only scales polynomially with your system size. However, if you use any classical neural network to represent it, then it will require exponentially a uh, large number of uh, parameters, okay? Uh, another advantage is uh, when you're training this network, uh, it has an exponential speed up compared to the uh, classical counterpart. Finally, after you train this, your model, uh, you, you need to generate some new images, right? Generate some new data. Uh, at this uh, stage, you can also prove that this QGM model also has a exponential advantages in the inference stage, okay? Uh, so also like this, uh, the uh, classical like generative adversarial network uh, proposed by, by Goldflow uh, also recently be uh, generalized to the uh, quantum uh, regime. Uh, we, we did an experiment to uh, demonstrate principle experiment also. So all this like a uh, quantum generative model like this HH algorithm and this QGM model, they all, uh, I mean, has a, a exponential advantages. I mean, quoted exponential advantages. There are still some caveat, okay? But anyway, it's, uh, it's uh, the possibilities, so it real, really has some possibility to uh, achieve uh, exponential advantages okay, here. Uh, uh, you, oh, by the way, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, just feel free to, to stop me and uh, ask, turn on your microphone and ask directly, okay? So, so, so far, so good, right? Okay, good. So, okay, <laughs> thank you, Asha, yeah. So uh, there, there are also some uh, many more uh, works in the uh, quantum uh, in, along this way, like uh, the quantum feed forward neural network and the quantum CNN. Actually, this quantum CNN is uh, invented by the Howard group, by uh, Michelle Lukin's group, okay? And uh, also like a quantum capacitor network, et cetera. So we wrote a, a quite comprehensive review on this, uh, like this, uh, Lee and Den, this, this is a review paper on this quantum uh, neural network and uh, quantum classifiers. If you're interested, you, uh, you can uh, refer to this uh, review for details, okay. So uh, I want to spend a little bit more time on uh, another emergent uh, direction in this uh, field, the so-called quantum adversarial machine learning. So, you know, in the classical machine learning literature, you may heard this example, like for instance, uh, if you train a neural network to recognize different uh, images, okay? But however, this machine deep learning model usually are very vulnerable to adversarial perturbations, adversarial attacks. Uh, the, the famous example is that, for instance, you have a panda, then you add a little bit of noise. This noise is carefully designed noise. You add it to this image of panda. Then you input this image to the network, and this network will predict it as a given with very high confidence level. So from our human eyes, you can see this is still a panda, right? The, the difference is even in, uh, acceptable to the human eyes. That also means that our human eyes are quite robust to adversarial uh, examples. I mean, that's still a mystery why our human eyes is so robust, okay? Um, 
there's also a, a joke in the machine learning uh, community uh, saying that you can in machine learning you can make a pig fly. Uh, uh, th this means uh, you can add a little bit of noise to an image or pig, and then you add you input this image or pig to the uh, machine learning system. Then the system will predict it as a high level, also with a high uh, confidence level. So uh, that means this vulnerability of the machine learning system will have a, a lot of uh, critical uh, implementations, right? For instance, like in self-driving cars, if you add a little bit of noise to this uh, like stop sign, if the system will recognize it uh, as another sign, then it may cause an accident or even a disaster, right? Also in the medical uh, machine learning uh, 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 area, right? Um, so the essential idea uh, between, I mean, underlying this adversary example is actually uh, quite simple. Let me explain it uh, with the uh, supervised learning uh, scenario. So if we consider supervised learning scenario, all the data are labeled like here, this DN is the data set, XN is the uh, input data sample, YN is the corresponding labels. And uh, then when you, you, you build up a new network right, with the variational parameters, and then you want to train this network to recognize these uh, different samples, try to assign labels to unseen uh, data samples, right? So the training process is basically, you want to minimize some loss function with respect to the uh, variational model parameters like the theta here, right? And this L is the uh, loss function. Okay, this HL is the prediction of your model, your neural network, right? So then after the training was done, then you basically fix the uh, parameter, the model parameter theta, and then you try to uh, obtain the adversarial uh, perturbations. In order to adversarial, obtain adversarial perturbations, you do another optimization program. You basically want to maximize this loss function with respect to the input data. Okay, now this time with respect to the input data, you add a little bit of noise to the input data, like this small delta within the regime of uh, this uh, capital delta. Uh, you, you then maximize this loss function, okay. So uh, at the end of the day, this is just a, a optimization uh, program. There's already a lot of uh, algorithms in the classical literature to uh, solve this uh, uh, optimization problem, like a differential evolution algorithm, faster collision sign method, et cetera, okay. So then the question is that uh, are all these like the quantum learning system vulnerable to the adversarial uh, risk uh, perturbation or not, right? Uh, of course, the answer uh, is yes. So we systematically studied this program. Like here, we replace the classical neural network with uh, some quantum classifiers. So quantum classifiers are basically, you can regard, it, regard them as a variational quantum circuit, okay? So then you input, uh, some adversarial examples to this uh, quantum classifier, right? It will give you wrong, incorrect uh, predictions, okay? So in our uh, work, we uh, studied like a targeted attack and uh, uh, untargeted attack. So the targeted attack means you only, uh, you, the untargeted attack means you only want the classifier to give incorrect uh, answers, but you do not care about which label it will assign to. Uh, for targeted attack, you want the uh, classifier to assign a particular label to all the data sample. This is a, called a targeted attack. Uh, so all these like uh, different attacks are just uh, you want to solve some optimization problems like this uh, here. Okay, so we then uh, systematically uh, studied all this problem. Uh, we we first did some uh, numerical simulation like uh, showing here. So like here for this uh, uh, handwriting digit in the M list data set, right? Like this 1199. If you add a little bit of noise to these uh, images, you, you can see that the quantum classifier will misclassify these images. Like here one is predicted as nine, et cetera, right? So one thing I want to stress here is that the fidelity, you see that the fidelity between the adversarial example and the legitimate sample is, uh, so the, the average fidelity is very, uh, I mean, is still larger than 90%, right? That means the difference between these two images are very small, but the 
uh, quantum uh, classifier will give incorrect uh, uh, predictions. Okay. So we also uh, studied the targeted attack, and we studied the uh, black, black box attack also. So the previous two slides shows the white box attack, meaning that the attacker has the full information about the quantum classifier. Uh, then in the setting of black box attack, then the, uh, we, we assume that the attacker has no information about the quantum classifier. Okay. So in both cases, we, we show that the, uh, you always have adversarial example in the adversarial perturbations. Okay. So we moved on to uh, study uh, uh, further the universal uh, property of adversarial example in the adversarial perturbations. We asked the two uh, different questions. The first question is, uh, can we uh, use a single adversarial example to cheat a set of different quantum classifiers or not, right? One single image cheat uh, a, a different set of classifiers. The second question is that, can we add uh, the same perturbation to different samples and make those samples adversarial example? That means this, after we add this adversarial perturbation to this sample, they will cheat the classifier. All of them will be, become adversarial uh, example, okay? So we prove uh, two uh, theorems. So the first one, the theorem one uh, is uh, in uh, addressing the first uh, question. So if we consider key quantum classifiers, then basically we show that you only need to increase the perturbation a little bit. Like, like uh, uh, the details is not uh, important. So uh, you can see from this equation that this using is basically the strength of your perturbation. Uh, the, the four over D, D is the Hilbert dimension of your system. So this D is an exponentially large number. Okay, four over D is exponentially small. Uh, so that means your perturbation strength can be exponentially small, right? And uh, the scaling with K is just the log K. You only need to increase a little bit of your uh, perturbation strength. Then you can cheat all the K different quantum classifiers, okay? So that means universal adversary examples really uh, exist, right? So the basic, uh, the proof of this uh, theorem uh, is uh, uh, a little bit uh, technically evolved. So uh, we basically use the uh, so-called concentration of measure phenomena, okay? Uh, for the second question, uh, we also basically prove that uh, as, as, long, as long as the system size is large enough, then you, will, you can always add adversarial perturbations to different uh, uh, sample data to make them adversarial uh, example, okay? So I will not go to the details of the theorem, okay? So this is a, a theory about this. Uh, so we, we systematically studied this, like uh, the vulnerability of quantum systems uh, against adversarial attacks. So then we, we, we uh, this is a theory. So we collaborate with the uh, uh, Hao Wan's group at the Zhejiang University. We, we really uh, demonstrated this uh, in our experiment. So we, we carried out an experiment with a uh, with, uh, uh, flip chip superconducting quantum processor. We basically have a 36 transmark qubit. Uh, the good thing is that for this uh, chip, so the average uh, simultaneous single and the two qubit gate fidelity is, is very high, is uh, already above 99.94. And 99.4. Uh, I would I would say this is already the state of the art. I mean, at this large size, okay. And also, the average lifetime of those qubit is uh, already larger than 150 uh, microsecond. So it's 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 uh, it's, it's also a very uh, large uh, 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 coherence time. So that's this those uh, like factors are really critical for the success of, of our experiment. And this is the first experimental demonstration of quantum adversarial learning. So in our experiment, basically, we studied the classification of the medical uh, hand breast MRI data, okay? So 
uh, there, there, there's a, a challenge. First, we, we came, came across a challenge is that how can we efficiently transfer the classical MRI data, data to quantum states, right? So if you use the MPU encoding, you need, then you need to prepare a highly entangled state, which is very uh, resource demanding and very challenging, especially for NISQ device. Those, those devices have uh, noises. So uh, after uh, we, we struggled for a while, then we, uh, uh, we, we come across uh, with a, a, a solution. So we basically employed the so-called interleaved block encoding. So the essential idea here is that now we, we, we do not uh, want to prepare a highly entangled quantum state. Instead, we just input this uh, like uh, for any image, uh, any image is just a vector, right? So we just uh, input this uh, vector into as a variational parameter of our quantum circuit. We input this parameter uh, here in, inside our quantum circuit, okay? And we, for each layer, we also uh, hybrid it, the, the input data with our model parameter, like showing here the theta. And this, this is the so-called interleaved uh, block encoding. Then with this encoding, the, the good property of this encoding is that uh, with this encoding, we do not need to prepare a highly entangled state. And also the performance of this quantum classifier is, is already uh, large enough. We did a lot of numerical simulation and showing that even with noise, we can, uh, the, the experimental is uh, feasible. So then we carried out this experiment. Uh, here in C shows the, uh, our experimental result, uh, this uh, uh, image C. So as you can see, the, the X, uh, horizontal axis is the epoch of our training. So as the epoch increases, you can see the accuracy of our quantum classifier also increases, right? And the loss uh, 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 decreases. So uh, after around uh, like uh, 20 uh, epochs, then almost all the images of uh, hand and the uh, breast can be correctly classified as showing uh, here in the inside the D, uh, right? Then, then we, uh, after this, after the training, then we fix uh, the model parameter, those thetas, and then we want to add adversarial perturbations to the images. Uh, we also did this experiment. So we add a little bit of noise to the images, okay? Then uh, we input the data to the quantum classifier. And from our experiment, if the, the quantum classifier will give uh, incorrect uh, predictions uh, as shown in the figure F. So here I also want to emphasize that for almost all the uh, images, we can add a little bit of noise to make them adversarial uh, examples. That means we only need to add a little bit of noise for all of them not a particular image, okay? All, of, all the images, we can add a little bit of noise to it and to make it, uh, to, to, to make it a, a cheat, the quantum classifier, okay? Okay, uh, so far so good, right? If you have questions, please uh, stop me, okay? So we also, uh, for quantum classifier, a difference is that we can also take care of quantum data, right? So uh, we also studied the uh, quantum, uh, you use quantum classifier to classify quantum data. Here we studied the, like the thermal and the localized data. We want to classify those two different kind of data. So I will not go to the detail of this. So now we talked about, so the quantum classifier is also very vulnerable to adversarial uh, perturbations or adversarial attacks. Then another question, following up question is that, how can we define it, right? How can we like defense the adversarial attack? So a very straightforward uh, defense strategy is the so-called adversarial training. That uh, the essential idea of adversarial training is that we can retrain the quantum classifier with uh, numerically generated adversarial examples, right? So basically we, we retrain the classifier. So in our experiment, we also uh, show this. So you, you can see from uh, here, as we uh, in retrain the quantum classifier, at the end of the day, the classifier will uh, correctly classify 
both the legitimate and the adversarial uh, samples, right, with a very high uh, accuracy. Okay. So uh, for the details, uh, our paper is uh, published uh, uh, in uh, as a cover uh, paper on uh, natural computational science. Okay. Uh, for details, you can also uh, see the uh, news and the views paper by uh, Dr. Bunch. Okay. So the take home message here is that security matters. The vulnerability of quantum learning really demands uh, extra care. Okay. So, so for now, I talked about how can we use quantum uh, algorithm basically to speed up or, or to speed up like the machine learning tasks, right? So the quantum you also has another advantage in the security part, like uh, um, like you 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 know that quantum QKD, right? So also we have like a, a blend of quantum computation. So now I will show you that we can also uh, propose some new paradigm for the uh, quantum uh, uh, for for the uh, AI uh, paradigms. Okay. So uh, we propose a quantum federated learning, okay? So uh, the in the scenario of federated learning, basically the task is like this. So for instance, several uh, clients, they want to train a common model. However, they want to keep their data in private. Uh, for instance, several hospitals, right? They want to train a model to classify uh, images uh, like a, MRI scan images for cancer, right? But they want to keep privacy of their patient's data, right? So how can we accomplish this task? This is this this is the so-called uh, federated uh, learning. So in the classical case, in order to solve this, uh, achieve this uh, uh, goal, you need to uh, like use uh, a holo holographic uh, encoding, right? It's really like resource demanding, okay? And you also need a lot of uh, uh, and the security. You also need uh, some uh, assumptions to assure the security. However, in the quantum case, we have a, a blind quantum computation, and this uh, security is uh, in some sense uh, unconditional, as long as you know believe that the quantum mechanics is correct. Okay. Um, of course, then we 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 can use this uh, uh like a blended quantum computing uh, scheme uh to uh propose a quantum federated learning uh, uh uh paradigm, and we uh, also studied this problem. So uh, however, in order to train this model, you also the difference between the traditional like uh, a blended quantum computing, we also need to take up. Uh, of the gradient attack, right? Uh, because when you want to train the model, you also need to share the gradient. You, you need to publicly announce what is the gradient you calculated from the quantum server, right? So, but uh, however, with, with this gradient at the hand, you can, uh, you can do a gradient attack. You can infer the image, you can infer the input data, okay? So in order to solve this problem, uh, you you need to use uh, uh, differential privacy. So the idea is that we just add a little bit appropriate noise, such as Laplace or Gaussian noise, to those uh, gradient uh, gradients before the publicly announcing them. So after this, uh, we add differential privacy. You can see that the uh, we we can really uh, preserve our privacy. Okay. So uh, another uh, recent progress is about the absence and the uh, uh, presence of barren plateaus in tensor network-based machine learning. So uh, in our paper, we uh, in this paper, we basically show that the barren plateaus exist for the global uh, loss if we, uh, for all the models like based on the tensor networks, uh, but for the local loss, uh, defined by the system size independent observables, uh, there is no uh, barren plateau. Uh, then uh, uh, Arthur's group uh, at Harvard, I think also published a very uh, beautiful paper. Uh, they systematically studied, they, they generalized our result uh, to the uh, loss function with arbitrary loss function and uh, uh, made a very comprehensive study on this program. 
So uh, uh, their paper is already uh, published uh, in uh, in this journal. So it's a it's a it's a very uh, beautiful paper with a, with a very uh, comprehensive uh, and thoroughly study about this uh, program. Okay. So and, uh, I also want to talk uh, spend a little bit of time on talking about uh, machine learning in quantum physics. I think. So uh, I, I should part, say that that Roy Garcia and Chen Zhao are in your talk. Uh, sorry. Two of the authors, uh, well, the, all three of the other authors are in. <laughs> sorry, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> um, okay, I also want to uh, talk, talk about the uh, machine learning uh, also in quantum physics. Okay. So uh, like the machine learning uh, physics or matter, right? You basically, you just uh, replace the labels of cats and the dogs. Uh, with uh, like uh, different uh, order parameters, okay? And uh, there are different approaches like supervised learning, uh, unsupervised learning, uh, et cetera. Uh, however, uh, as I already uh, showed that all the classical machine learning model are basically vulnerable to adversarial examples, right? Then all these like machine learning approaches to uh, non physics or matter also are vulnerable to adversarial attacks, okay? Uh, we showed this uh, with an experiment by using the NV Center uh, simulator. Okay, so uh, as you can see, you, you can also create adversarial examples uh, in in real uh, experiment. Okay, uh, another way uh, to use the uh, techniques and the ideas from uh, AI to solve uh, quantum many body problems, right, is to use neural network to uh, represent quantum states, uh, like this uh, famous uh, paper by uh, Jason B. Carroll in the Troyer, the science paper, okay? So basically you can use a new network to represent uh, quantum states. So the advantage of this is that, so this uh, you can, you can uh, the, the model is quite, you can, you can basically prove that this new network uh, representation can represent an arbitrary quantum states as long as you have a large enough number of parameters, okay? So uh, uh, this, you, you can solve the ground state and the dynamics uh, with this approach, right? And more recently, uh, those approaches are also extended to the open uh, quantum systems to uh, like solving uh, uh, quantum master uh, equations. Uh, I do not have time to, to go over the details of this, okay? And this, this approach can also uh, be applied to like detecting quantum non-locality, quantum tomography, uh, like uh, reconstructing uh, density metrics and also computing uh, OTOC, uh, et cetera. Um, uh, another uh, 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 recent advance is that we can also use reinforcement learning to do quantum compiling. So uh, in this work, we found that the quantum compiling program it has a, a lot of similarity between the problem of uh, solving a cube, okay? So in the problem of solving a cube, you want to find a sequence of uh, rotations, right? To, to, to solve the cube. In, in the uh, quantum compiling program, you also want to find a sequence of elementary gates to approximate uh, some uh, quantum targeted quantum gates, right? So they are similar, okay? So we studied an example about the breeding uh, Fibonacci onions, basically in, in, to, to compare, for instance, to uh, like the Hardmart gate and the XY gate, et cetera. So the performance of this uh, reinforcement learning approach uh, is showing uh, in this, uh, uh, summarizing this figure. So we compare this with the brute force uh, approach. So you know the brute force, for the brute force approach, the time complexity is exponential, right? Uh, 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 and also there's another algorithm, the so-called solovic type algorithm. However, for the solovic type algorithm, although the scaling uh, is a, a log one over u sim to the power of 4.3, something like that. However, the, the pre-factor is pretty large. So as shown here, you see that the sequence, the, 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 the length of the compiling sequence is much larger than the brute force uh, approach and the reinforcement learning approach, right? Then this is crucial for the NISQ device applications 
if your service depth is too large, then it is really hard to, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you, you only, uh, because of the noise, you only get the garbage, right? So, so, so this is, uh, uh, this reinforcement learning uh, really can find new optimum, uh, like uh, comparing uh, sequences, okay? So our approach uh, has already been um, generalized to like multiple qubits uh, scenarios. And they are, they are uh, like uh, following uh, works on this direction. Uh, also, we can uh, uh, inspired by this uh, like a neural evolution algorithm. We also propose the so-called uh, Markovian quantum neural evolution algorithm. Basically, we reduce the program to a search program over some directed graph. Okay, uh, I do not have time to go over this uh, to go over, uh, the detail. So uh, uh, I will spend uh, three or four minutes talking about this uh, time crystal thing. So uh, with this uh, quantum neural evolution algorithm, uh, we we can uh, simulate uh, the so-called digital uh, digital simulation of the topological time crystal. So uh, so the ordinary you know the ordinary time crystal will uh, ordinary crystal will spontaneously breaking the space translational symmetry, right? So then in 2012, uh, Frank Wilczek proposes the concept of a so-called time crystal. So he asked that, can we spontaneously break the time translational symmetry in the time, like, like uh, the, uh, in the time direction, right? So um, however, after his paper, so there is a no-go theorem uh, by Watanabe and Oshikawa. So basically they showed that uh, if, if you only consider like a ground state or the thermal Gibbs state uh, for equilibrium system, so there is uh, no uh, time crystal phase. You cannot uh, obtain time crystal phase. So, so this is the so-called uh, no-go theory. However, if you release the requirement of equilibrium, you consider some non-equilibrium system, like you drive the system, you drive the system, okay, always drive. Then uh, you can break the discrete uh, discrete time translational symmetry. Uh, for instance, in the manually localized system, right? So this is the uh, what we uh, talk about, like uh, the fractal time crystal. Okay. So there are uh, several uh, experiments already now to uh, realize this fractal time crystal. So uh, then comes uh, uh, our experiment basically realizes the uh, so-called topological time crystal. So the, for the uh, fractal time crystal showing here, so the time translational symmetry uh, is broken uh, uh, throughout the whole system. But for the topological time crystal, the time translational symmetry breaking only occurs at the boundaries. That's due to the uh, non-trivial topology of the system. Okay. Uh, I, I, I do not have time to go over the uh, details. So the essential idea here is that we use this uh, Markovian quantum neural uh, algorithm uh, inspired by AI uh, from the AI community. Uh, we we uh, find out some very uh, optimal circuit to digitally simulate this fractal Hamiltonian. Uh, without this, uh, such an algorithm, is uh, this experiment uh, maybe is uh, harder to do? Okay. So, um, so this is our experimental uh, result. So, as you can see, uh, for the edge spins, uh, this uh, the oscillation persists for more than uh, forty uh, during uh, uh, period, right? But for the bulk spins, it will decay to zero very quickly. Okay, that means. Uh, the uh, spontaneous breaking of time transitional symmetry only really happens at the boundaries, okay? So, um, uh, yeah, I'll have roughly about uh, five or four minutes. So uh, now uh, I will talk about the uh, future challenges in this uh, direction. I think uh, I will give 10 uh, future challenges. So the first challenge is uh, the quantum automated serial proven. So uh, this is, uh, I think, is a uh, rarely uh, investigated uh, direction. Okay, so uh, this there, uh, there is really a lot of opportunity here. So in order to, so the question is that can we like derive, design some quantum algorithms 
to uh, efficiently solve like uh, uh, automated serial proving or not, right? Or, or can we find some quantum advantages here? Okay. The second challenge is to build the uh, quantum learning theory. At this stage, we do not have a, 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 a comprehensive theory about which task can be solved by quantum computer efficiently, uh, which task cannot. Okay. The challenge three is uh, we want to find out what is the essential quantum resources that enables advantages uh, in quantum learning. Okay. Uh, whether it is the uh, quantum non-locality, uh, quantum contextuality, quantum discord, or some other uh, wired quantum uh, property, quantum features that enables us to obtain uh, the uh, quantum advantage, right? So the challenge in four is uh, uh, quantum learning supremacy. That means uh, can we first propose a theoretical uh, a model, a theoretical scenario, well, we can show quantum learning supremacy. That means only quantum computer can solve this problem, but the classical computer cannot uh, do it uh, efficiently. Uh, first, uh, in theory, and then experimentally demonstrate this quantum learning supremacy, right? And after we demonstrate the learning supremacy, how can we verify that it is indeed quantum uh, supremacy? Because we we can now we cannot use a quantum compute we use a classical computer to do the verification right. The challenge five is can we understand deep learning uh, from the physics perspective more uh, deeply right more clearly okay. Challenge six is that uh, we talked about uh, a lot of uh, like machine learning uh, 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 quantum learning tasks right. For in the machine learning literature. The, most, of the data, most of the data are classical. Then a problem is that can we find a more efficient way to transfer classical data to quantum states, right? Uh, challenge seven is that can we find an AI program that shows unambiguous complexity separation between quantum and the classical algorithms? Okay. Challenge eight is about the uh, law of noises. Can we use noise? Like you, you, there are already a, 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 some paper using noise to do the to defense the adversarial attack, right? So also, uh, changing line quantum language processing, right? So uh, can we find some uh, quantum advantages in this uh, direction in the language uh, natural language processing direction? Actually, there's recently uh, some uh, very uh, nice work by Gaussian at Harvard uh, on this heading Markovian model. They proved that there are indeed some quantum advantages there. Okay, so the last challenge I think is also very important is how to measure this quantum intelligence. Whether this uh, much, uh, quantum learning system is smarter than the other one, how can we quantify it? Right. Okay. So uh, let me let me quote uh, Charles Dickens uh, to end my talk. So it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity, it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness. I think this is also true for the current stage of quantum AI. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dunling, for a beautiful overview. And we look forward to a lot of discussion. Thank you. Like turn off the sheen squaring so we can see each other. And I hope that when okay. we talk to each other, that it will be possible to uh, turn on your video so we can see who's talking. So you quoted so many people, I'm sure that there's a lot of people who want to make remarks. Who would like to make the first remark? <laughs> <laughs> Seems I, uh, I, I, I did not explain crystal clear about this uh, concept. <laughs> so
So Kaifeng, you took, turned on your microphone. Did you want to say something? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, nice yeah. talk. Uh, so I have a very basic question. Uh, is there any like example, like a, like a practical example or like a useful problem or like people, okay, uh, the, pro pro the problem people care about uh, where uh, the quantum machine learning is uh, faster or better than classical machine learning method? Yes, that's really a good question. Yeah, that's actually the, the target of the current community. I think the, the community, the whole community is kind of looking for such a program. Yeah, at this stage, we, we, we do not have such a, a, a program yet. Uh, there, there are some, uh, some like, uh, like some, some works like uh, uh, Liu Yingchao uh, uh, and the uh, Wazrani, uh, the Wazrani group, okay. Uh, Awunish Wazrani group, yeah. So they, they proved that uh, in certain cases, uh, they, in supervised learning, they have a provable quantum advantage. However, in their paper, in that case, you also needed to do uh, face estimation, like uh, similar to the uh, Schwarz factorization, right? That means uh, you really, the, the circuit depth is uh, always too, uh, too large. For NISQ device, it's not uh, feasible, yeah. So it's, uh, it's not that we, 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 we are still far away from there yet. Yeah. So, so the question is that, can we really find like a, a, a program a friendly to NISQ device, right? That's the important thing, yeah. I think this is a goal for the whole community yeah, at the current stage. Yeah. Thank you for the very nice question, yeah. Okay, I think there, there's another problem, like uh, uh, in my machine learning, okay, to, in my point of view, in machine learning, there are two, uh, two kinds of mathematical problems. One is optimization, the other is generalization. Yeah. And the, uh, and if for these two problems, uh, like uh, which one will like quantum machine learning better than classical machine learning? Because quantum, like uh, the quantum here of the space is larger than the, class, than the classical one. So the generalization will be worse, I, in my point of view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really a, a, a good question, yeah. So yeah, I, I agree, yeah. So uh, I mean, intuitively, the quantum case, uh, the generalization error might be larger, right? Because uh, it's, uh, the whole space is huge. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, for, for, for this optimization, like uh, in, in variational quantum circuit, so uh, we, we did uh, some uh, uh, experiment on this. It turns out that we are, at, at the beginning, we are too optimistic about the variational quantum circuit. In reality, we always like uh, trapped at some local minimums. So, so if you look at the paper on variational quantum circuit, like uh, our paper in the IBM's paper, Google's paper, uh, uh, Trevor, uh, like uh, IMQ's paper, so uh, if, if you go to larger system size, it, the, the uh, local minimum is always a, a big problem there. So, so if you want to find like the ground state energy, so you, uh, the ground state energy is, is we are still far away from that if you do variational quantum circuit. Yeah. So, 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 um, so, so, so that means for the optimization part, uh, at this stage, at, at least at this stage, we do not uh, see a real quantum advantage yet. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but for the optimization, like for the local minimum, do you have a way like to quantify the number of local minimums in, uh, for example, in the valuation of quantum circuits? Like how it will close or how it, how it will depends on the number of qubits the, or the parameters or the depth or the number of qubits in the circuit? Not really, yeah, yeah. I think this is a good question, but uh, we haven't uh, have an answer yet. Uh, the, uh, there are some works on uh, on the effective dimension, right? Yeah, I think you 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 know those works, right? But uh, still, we are we, we do not have a comprehensive uh, quantum learning uh, theory yet. Yeah. I see. Mm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Captain. Yeah. So in your discussion of adversarial tax, is it correct that you now can protect against targeted attacks? Mm. Uh, sorry, sorry, I, I didn't uh, gather your question. What, what was the outcome of your discussion of adversarial attacks? 
you you showed that there were methods that you could improve the learning. So is that now possible to protect against them? <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a really good question. Yeah. So at this stage, yeah, indeed we showed a, a defense strategy. Uh, however, uh, this defense strategy is, uh, 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 I mean, only works for a particular attack. So then you can uh, find some other method to attack the uh, the uh, system, but uh, the, this may uh, I mean the, the, uh, in, in in theory we can basically prove that there is no universal defense strategy. There always exists a, a quantum uh, uh, always exist adversarial perturbations as long as your system size is large enough. So so uh, also this means that there's a subtle trade off between quantum advantage and the adversarial robustness. You know, if you want to obtain quantum advantage, you want to go to larger system size, right? But uh, when you, your system size is large, then the adversarial uh, risk also increases. So we, we do not have a, a, a universal defense strategy yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, could I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the beautiful overview on the quantum machine learning. So, uh, as you mentioned, that the effect of, effect of noise uh, uh, happen. Uh, uh, the noise will sometimes destroy the quantum advantage and also destroy the trainability of current quantum machine learning model. For example, we, we have the noise induced barren plateaus. Yeah. And my question is, um, uh, do we need to introduce some uh, error correction techniques in the field of quantum machine learning? Uh, yes, indeed. I think uh, indeed. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, uh, indeed we needed to, uh, I mean, uh, like uh, introduce this error correction protocols to uh, the machine learning, quantum machine learning, yeah. Uh, there are some other, like uh, some works, like uh, exploit the noises to protect uh, adversarial attack. Uh, the, the works by uh, Nana Liu and, and uh, he, uh, her collaborators. Um, uh, the, 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 the program at the current stage, uh, uh, as, as, as I said, this is the best time of the quantum AI and the worst time. The worst time means uh, we, we, we still uh, do not have a quantum computer yet. So we do not have air correction, uh, I mean, available yet. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you have really have air correction, then I think we can basically like do uh, if the system size is large enough, right? We can we can do factorization and to show the quantum uh, supremacy. Yeah, the, 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 all, 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 all the concerns at the current stage is about the uh, NISQ, is about the noise. The, the middle size. So the problem is, can we use middle size, a noisy quantum device to show some quantum advantage? Yeah, this is a really a good question, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, I also want to, to, to uh, advertise that we recently also has another paper about uh, using this uh, uh, quantum air crashing code to protect uh, quantum classifiers from uh, uh, adversarial attack, yeah. This is a very recent paper. I think we, we just posted on our cow like one month ago or so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Well, if there are no other comments or questions, I want to thank you again, Don Like It was a real pleasure to have you here. And we look forward to your future results. It sounds like you'll have a lot of them. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you a lot. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you next week. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.